and Katrin. We look forward to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to take you on a short trip into the field of neuroimmunology. In particular, we are going to take a closer look at autoantibodies in childhood demyelinating diseases. So what kind of demyelinating diseases do we know in children? Basically, there are two. One being ADEM, which is the abbreviation for acute demyelinating encephalomyelitis, and the other one is MS, which is short for multiple sclerosis. So those of you who are not coming from a medical background probably ask them th themselves what actually is demyelination. So demyelination means that the outer layer of the nerve fibers, that is the myelin, is actually destroyed, and in these diseases, it is because of an autoimmune inflammatory process. This means that in these patients, the body is attacking its own central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord. Both diseases, ADEM and MS, share a common set of clinical symptoms, including impaired vision, paresthesia, muscle weakness, spasms, as well as bowel and bladder dysfunction. But how are they different? ADEM, which is probably less known, is an acute inflammatory demyelinating disease of the central nervous system. It is monophasic, meaning that these patients have one acute phase of inflammation in their brain, and then they get healthy afterwards. Interestingly, the disease occurs predominantly in children. In contrast, MS, which probably most of you are familiar with, is a chronic inflammatory demyelinating disease of the central nervous system, and it is multiphasic, meaning that these patients have several attacks of inflammation, and the disease is chronic. They never get healthy again. MS occurs predominantly in young adults. The question is now, are these two diseases different? Or do they maybe share a common pathogenesis? And in ADEM patient, for some reason, the patients get healthy again. And in MS, the disease becomes chronic. So since very little is known about autoantibodies in these diseases in children, we address the question by screening um, the serum of the patients for autoantibodies against um, human brain proteins. One protein we identified that was target of these autoantibodies was myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein, abbreviated MOG. What is MOG? MOG is a myelin protein which is only expressed in the central nervous system. And it is exposed on the outer surface of the myelin sheath, which makes it thereby very easily accessible for potential autoantibodies. Interestingly, anti-MOG antibodies cause demyelination in the animal model, and they have very long time been controversially discussed to play a potentially pathogenic role in adult MS patients. So in order to further investigate this anti-MOG response in the patients, we produced cell lines that are expressing this MOG protein on the cell surface, and we were then incubating these cells with serum from patients and controls, and looked whether these antibodies that were in the serum would really recognize this protein. Here I summarized the results. On the y-axis here, we have the anti-MOG reactivity, and on the x-axis, we have the different patient and control groups. So for the pediatric patients, we looked at ADEM, MS, and controls. And just to get an idea to compare, we also looked at adult patients, MS, and controls. 
So every dot represents the morg reactivity of one patient or control. And what we saw is that in 30% of these childhood pediatric patients and only in 6% of the adult MS patients, but in none of the controls, we have antibodies against myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein. We then asked the question, well, how are these autoantibodies reacting over time? And I summarized the results in this slide. Here on the left, again, we have the ADEM patients, and on the right, the multiple sclerosis patients. Again, the anti morg reactivity is on the y-axis, and down here, we have the time in month. So every color represents one patient, and the different points are the different points of blood roll, and this here is the start of the disease. So what we saw is that in the ADEM patients, the antibodies are rapidly disappearing within the first month after disease onset, whereas in the multiple sclerosis patients, these antibodies are persisting with fluctuating levels. So let me summarize. So we have found a potential biomarker that is namely the persistence of antibodies to MOG that really distinguishes childhood multiple sclerosis from acute demyelinating encephalomyelitis. And this has two main implications. First of all, it seems that ADEM and MS have a different etiology and maybe also pathogenesis. And second, one could think about whether these people with these patients with anti morg antibodies would potentially benefit from an optimized therapy, which would either be plasmapheresis, where you're taking out the antibodies from the patient's blood, or a treatment that targets the antibody-producing B cells. This takes me to the end of my talk, and I would like to thank all of those who have contributed to this really exciting project. In particular, I would like to thank my supervisors, Tobias Derfus and Edgar Meinl. And I would like to thank my um, doctoral program, as well as the Elite Network of Bavaria for supporting my studies. And I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. That was an exciting... Uh, opening, and um, may I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. um, so, this um, multiple sclerosis in, in children, uh, you said that about one-third of those are, are uh, uh, producing these anti mog antibodies, mm -hmm. and the other two-thirds? That's a good question. <laughs> we don't know yet, but um, maybe let me just draw a parallel to another disease. To just, uh, this is very like recent data, so we are working on that. But some of you might know um, neuromyelitis optica, which is also an autoimmune disease where, um, in particular, the eyes are attacked. And there, a couple of um, years ago, one found a biomarker, which is aquaporin-4, like anti-aquaporin-4 autoantibodies, which are present in 70% uh, of the patients. And, um, I mean, I think for MOG, it might be a question of sensitivity of the assay, and it might also be the problem that in children, it is really um, difficult to really characterize the disease. So maybe we have different disease entities and we end up having like this anti morg subpopulation characterizing one disease entity. That would be the second um, in addition to the assay. Or we have another antibody which is playing a role in the others. We don't know yet. We are right now optimizing the assay, and since um, I screened for autoantibodies, we have also other potential targets that we are like, will further investigate in the future. Thank you.